Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making this huge Wonder Woman pop art Roy Lichtenstein picture out of 100% chocolate. This week's Notification Squad shout out goes to Kim Sharon for your chance at a shout out. Subscribe and press the bell to turn on notifications and write done in the comments for me so I know that you have done so. To make this crazy sweet creation, print out the pop art artwork nice and large and trace around all of the red and pink parts onto some acetate and cut them out. Colour some white chocolate using oil-based food colouring and spread it thinly onto your acetate. Then add the lip pieces upside down onto the chocolate. And the reason I'm going to add them upside down is twofold. One, because the acetate on the bench side is completely flat, whereas the stuff we're putting on the top is a little bit curved. And two, because air bubbles will rise up to the top and we don't want any air bubbles on our pieces. So this way, when we flip it over, we get the nice, perfect side for our artwork. Once that is starting to set, cut around the shapes using the acetate as your guide. And you can see there right in the middle of the lip, there's a big air bubble. And that's why we're using the other side, not this side. Add a whole heap more colour to get that bright red colour. To get it this intense, I'm using coloured cocoa butter, which is another way you can colour your chocolate. You just melt the coloured cocoa butter in the microwave and then add it and mix it in. So you can use that or you can use powdered oil-based food colouring. You can't use your gel or your liquid food colours because they have the liquid, the water in them, they will seize your chocolate. Spread out the red chocolate and add the pieces over the top and then cut around those two. When you're cutting out the shapes, make some extra cuts running out towards the edge and this will just make it easier to get these pieces off. If you just have one large outside piece, it might be a bit tricky to get them off without breaking your shapes. But if you've got lots of little ones, it's easy to take them all off. For the white colour, I'm using white cocoa butter on its own and I'm spreading it out really thinly onto some acetate. This is a bit like making your own chocolate transfer sheet. White chocolate is actually quite yellowy as you know, so to try and colour it and make it really white is a bit tricky. Add the tempered white chocolate over the top and put your pieces into place and then just like before we need to cut around each one. Colour and temper some blue chocolate and to get this bright blue I used a whole packet of powdered blue food colouring. That cartoony blue is pretty intense but it looks awesome. Add your pieces over the top and there are so many blue bits it's a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. To get them to fit just start with the biggest pieces and work your way down to the smaller ones and you should be right. Then trace around each of those pieces using your knife. Working with chocolate like this takes a long time because you have to temper each batch of chocolate. Now, if you don't know what tempering is, what it does is it makes all the crystals in the cocoa butter line up really tightly together so that it sets firmly at room temperature so that the chocolate's not all soft when it's at room temperature. If you don't know how to do that, there's several ways you can do it at home. And I've got a video called Chocolate Secrets, which shows you how you can do that at home. But it does take a little bit of time. Each time you want to melt some chocolate, you need to temper that chocolate. So there's a lot of tempering going on in this artwork. Lighten some of your blue by adding more white chocolate and of course temper that and then add the eye pieces on top and cut around them. To make the skin with those iconic pop art dots, you'll need some bubble wrap. Now this one has raised bubbles on one side and smooth plastic on the other. Some bubble wraps have that smooth plastic on both sides and you can't use that type. So make sure you get this one that has the bubbles. Using permanent marker, trace the shape of the face and all the other dotty areas of skin onto the smooth side of the bubble wrap. And make sure you also mark down that area of the face that is plain and not dotty too. Cut along the lines that you've just drawn so that you end up with five pieces of bubble wrap. Melt two kilograms of white chocolate and temper it of course and then spread that out onto a large silicon fondant rolling mat or if you don't have one of those you could use some foil underneath it instead. Level it using a spatula as best as you can and then gently press the bubble wrap down on top. Look at all those dots perfectly lined up. 
add all of the rest of the pieces and check that the chocolate is coming up in between each of the bubbles to fill that area up. If it's not, just gently press down with your fingers to get it to fill up. Cover that whole thing in non-stick baking paper or you could use foil and then place something heavy and flat over the top and push it down gently to make sure your pieces are level. Remove those and once the chocolate is starting to set but is still soft, use a knife to cut around each piece. Once it is set, remove the excess and place it in a bowl. Peel off the bubble wrap so you're left with this beautiful textured chocolate. Look at that, doesn't it just look perfect? Melt the white chocolate off cuts and put some of them in a smaller bowl and add to that some oil-based food colouring. To get that cartoony pink, I'm using some red and then to offset the yellowy tone from the chocolate, I'm adding the tiniest amount of blue. Once you're happy with that shade, you can then colour the big bowl of white chocolate and temper that and then pour it over the set chocolate. By testing your colouring on a small batch first, if you make a mistake, you haven't ruined the whole lot. So that's why I encourage you to just colour a small bowl and then colour the rest. Now it doesn't matter here if you still have a thin layer of the pink over the top of the white. In fact, that's just fine. That'll make sure that they're all full. So just have it just very thin going over the top. And I'm just going to work on one piece at a time here because they're such big pieces. Once that pink chocolate is starting to set, take a scraper and run it across the top to scrape back a thin layer so that then you can see the pattern that we're after underneath. Continue scraping it back and if you have any areas which are a little bit recessed, like I've got a little bit here, then you might need to use the edge of a spoon or a sharp knife to scrape those bits back. I am so glad that this worked. In my head when I came up with the idea, I thought, yeah, this would definitely work. But once I've actually committed so many blocks of chocolate to this and so much time tempering and cutting out all of the template pieces, I started to have doubts of what if this doesn't work? But it's looking beautiful, so we're all on track. Now, because we have scraped it back, it does have like a really fine white sort of almost dust over the top of it. I don't know if you can see that, but the chocolate looks a little bit dull when it's been scraped. So to bring it back to life, what you need to do is fold some paper towel and dip it in some ice cold water and rub it all over the surface. I don't know if you can really see the difference on camera here. Here's before and after, before and after. It's not a lot of difference. I can probably see it better with my eyes than you can see on camera. Temper some dark chocolate and add to that some black oil-based food coloring. Keep adding more and more until you get a really good black color. Pour it onto a big sheet of acetate and place the black pieces on top. Now I've only cut out the bits that are on the face here, not the hair. We'll do all of those bits later. At this point, I realize I'm gonna need a lot more dark chocolate and a baseboard for the artwork. So after I've cut these out, I'll pause filming and go and buy another 20 blocks of dark chocolate, two more blocks of white and some wood for underneath. These tiny little ones are gonna to be too fiddly to cut out, so I'm just gonna pipe those ones instead. Okay, back from the shops, now we need lots of foil to cover the board. My local hardware store cuts the MDF wooden pieces to size, which just saves me a lot of time getting out the power tools. And then just wrap the foil around the edges and tape that into place. Once it's all taped up, flip it over so that we've got the foil side facing up. Now we're going to need some wood to make a frame so the chocolate doesn't just drip off the edges. Take each of the pieces of wood and wrap them in foil just squeezing it in at the ends and then tape each corner into place so that it sits like a frame around the edge. The frame is not actually attached to the baseboard and this is so that we can remove it later but we want it to sit nice and tightly and snug around the baseboard. Place the printout into the frame and use that to position the areas of skin. For the larger pieces, you can kind of hold it and hover it into place and then move the paper out. For the smaller pieces, I found putting it underneath and then just feeling with my fingers to check if they're in the right place and adjusting them accordingly is what worked. Temper some more white chocolate and then add some silicon bake snakes at the top and bottom of the face. So if you don't have those, you could use foil here instead. 
pour that tempered chocolate into the gap and for the finer areas I'm just going to use a piping bag just to make sure I get into each of the corners and that it doesn't drip everywhere. While that is setting we want to melt and temper our dark chocolate and into that I'm also going to mix the leftover black chocolate that we had. That's going to darken it a little, it's not going to make it that full black. I would just need so much colouring to get this much chocolate black. So I'm going to leave it that brownie chocolatey colour. Pour a jug full of dark chocolate up the top area and spread it out for her hair, trying to get it as smooth as you can. If you get a little bit over the skin, don't worry, we'll fix that up later. Just get it as thin as you can. Just use a piece of paper towel and just wipe it off as much as you can. Add the headband into place in the top corner there and then get some more jugs of chocolate. This is a very big artwork. This is a lot of chocolate going into this. Pour that into the next section and spread it down and around to fill all the way to the edges. Because this chocolate piece is her hair, try and make the lines from your spatula in the same direction as her hair should flow. So run it from the top down towards her shoulder. You can lift up that little shoulder piece while you spread the chocolate through that gap and then just pop it back carefully into place. Next, add your blue pieces where they should go, starting with the bits that sit on the edges because the chocolate at the edge is going to set faster than that that's in the middle. I love the shape of all these pieces. They just sort of all flow. They're a bit Art Nouveau sort of type look to the shapes. Temper a whole heap more dark chocolate and pour that into the final section. Spread it out using your spatula and then use a piping bag for those finer areas. If your piping bag happens to pop like mine did, it's a bit of a bummer, then just push as much of that chocolate off the skin as possible and then add all of those blue and red pieces into place using your picture. Just keep looking at your picture and keep checking that for reference so you know where they go. And again, try and do the ones that are touching the edge first because that chocolate is going to set first. Once it is set, use a sharp knife just to scrape off any of the dark chocolate that's on the skin area that shouldn't be there. And now to add the face. Cut your template and place it on the chocolate and use it to position the lips. Then remove the paper. You can glue all these pieces into place using some dark chocolate. And then add the pink lips and the white teeth on top and glue those into place using chocolate too. Continue using the template to add the pieces where they go. And you may have noticed there are two white dots on the face. That was where there must have been two bubbles on the bubble wrap that were popped so they didn't make a hole. I'm kind of hoping that one of these black pieces is going to cover that and disguise it. There you go, one of the eyebrows, they're not, it's not covering it, it's not over the top but it's kind of close enough that we don't notice it so much anymore. Add the white of the eye and then the black over that and then the bottom eyeliner should sit just underneath that. Add the blue iris, then the black pupil on top of that. And if your back is aching from bending over chocolate out all day, do some stretches and then put the other eye into place. Pipe a tiny dot of white chocolate onto each eye, sign your seven kilo chocolate artwork in the corner, clean up the kitchen, and then lie on the floor and take some photos and you're done. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more crazy sweet creations. Click here for more of my videos. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.